Hey everyone, welcome back to Bird Talk with Terrence Mathis. I'm William Brandon. Please make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel Atlanta Sports Unlimited and turn on those notifications so you don't miss an episode. Well, for the previous two weeks, we discussed Julio Jones. Looks like we're back doing that again. And in case you've been under a rock, Julio Jones said, I'm out of there, referring to the Atlanta Falcons via live call this past Monday with Shannon Sharp on Undisputed. So it appears Julio's time in Atlanta may be done. Where do we go from here? I mean, I don't even. <laughs> you don't even know where to start. We don't even know where to start this conversation, do we? But let me let me start the conversation this way. When Dan Quinn and the GM was dismissed from the Atlanta Falcons organization, Arthur Blank went on to say that whoever we hire as GM and head coach, let them deal with the two elephants in the room, which is Matt Ryan and Julio Jones. And if they feel that we need to do something different, we're gonna do it that way. But they gotta convince me that it's the right thing to do. Rich McKay says, you know, I will not intervene into the process of building this football program and less asked to. Okay, so right away, before we even hire a new GM and new head coach, talk was of possibly getting rid of both players or one or the other. So here we are, we hired the, we hired the head coach, we hired the GM. Now the question comes up again, well, we're always going to take calls on guys, and if it makes sense, we'll do what's best for the players and the organization. Now, here's the writing on the wall for Julio. The draft is about to start. All the draft talk is coming. It, it comes up. Hey, we got to get rid of Matt Ryan. You know, the fans say, hey, let's draft Justin Fields at number four, so let's draft the quarterback, whatsoever. So the head coach comes out and says, if we are in a rebuilding state, you hired the wrong two guys, relaying to himself and Fontenot. We can win football games with Matt Ryan. Not he didn't say Matt Ryan and Julio Jones. So right away, there has been conversation of trading Julio or doing something differently with him. Now, just recently, we hear that, oh, Julio asked for a trade in March. From a, a, a reliable source, a reporter says, who is your reliable source? We know it didn't come from Julio's camp, so it had to come from the Falcons camp. So the Falcons are constantly leaking stuff to the media for it to, to try to uh, gather a, a sense of it's not just us, it's them also, meaning Julio and his camp. Now, far as the interview on Undisputed with Shannon Sharp and the phone call, we don't know the context of what he said um, and, how, and what it was meant by it. The problem we have as fans, as people on podcasts and on YouTube channels, all these things and the media is this. We don't know Julio Jones. Julio Jones has never let us in to get to know him personally. So we don't know his personality. We don't know his thoughts. We don't know how he moves whatsoever. We don't know his nonverbal. We don't know his verbal because he never, we don't see Julio. We don't see him in commercials. We don't see him doing interviews often whatsoever. We don't ever see Julio being candid. So we don't know who Julio is. So when the statement came that I'm out of there, it could have meant two things. He could have said, I'm done with it, I'm out of it. Or he could have said, well, from what I hear from the Falcons, I'm out of there. So we don't know, but we always speculate. We wanna speculate and we wanna throw gasoline on the fire when it, when it concerns statements whatsoever. So this is my thing. And then, then Arthur Smith had a chance on Tuesday to address the media about it. He says, we're not gonna talk about it. We don't talk about personal conversations. Blah, 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 blah. Well, somebody in the organization is talking. Somebody's telling everything. 
and it, it, it's putting a damper on uh, Julio's legacy as an Atlanta Falcon, as a professional football player, period. Now, a lot of fans go, well, you know, hey, good riddance, he's selfish, this and that. No, no, no. He's not being, you know, at the end of the day, we can't worry about what Julio, put it this way, Julio Jones and Atlanta Falcons, uh, especially Atlanta Falcons, haven't paid a bill in my house in 20-something years. <laughs> Period. Julio Jones and Atlanta Falcons ain't paying nobody else's bills. So we should not get uptight about the business aspect of the NFL. Understand this. Me personally, I want Julio to stay. Can a relationship be rectified? I don't know. If it's about money, yes, it could be done. If it's about productivity that he doesn't fit, okay, here's the, that's why the trade is happening. But to me, if it's about productivity, he's going to be productive. If it's about money, let's move that money into bonuses and incentives so it, it can calculate to what his salary could be. Um, so at the end of the day, uh, here's a relationship that I don't think that's um, mendable. Um, at the end of the day, my selfish reasons is I would love Julio to retire in Atlanta Falcon. Um, he deserves that right. I, uh, I, I believe that he and Matt Ryan together, a uh, dynamic duel that we haven't seen in a long time, that they could do remarkable things. And I think they have another Super Bowl run in them if he would stay. Um, so, you know, a lot of things play into this, William. You know, we, we, we talking about Julio Jones and his situation. Julio is going to be fine. Wherever Julio go, if Julio does not play another down of football, he's going to the Hall of Fame, period. So at the end of the day, if, if Julio, when Julio goes, okay, we can't worry about him. He doesn't play for the Atlanta Falcons anymore. Now what happens is this, William. Here's the interesting thing right now. The head coach has to prove that he's a really good football coach because the pressure is going to be on every week, every Sunday, every time or he's on national TV. Are they going to perform at a high level without Julio Jones? So he's always going to have Julio Jones and number 11 over his over his shoulder looking and the fans are going to be looking to see, are you a good coach without Julio Jones? So now the pressure comes where I got to prove to people that I can do this job. For a first time head coach, that's tough. For a first time GM, that's tough. Me personally, I would have rolled this year out with, with the group intact. And then while we're in season, figuring out what the next move was going to be in February, March, April, whenever it, whenever it happens. Because now you, you already had a team that with a boost of energy and a, and a boost of new life had an opportunity to win this division and go deep into the playoffs. Now you have distractions. Now you have doubt because players and, you know, it, it's, it's crazy, William. And, 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 and I heard it, you know, I've been waiting for today because I've heard it all from people on social media, the media, uh, whatsoever, those ones that says, hey, I got a reliable source, what I hear, this and that, that, and this. I heard all that. I heard all that stuff. But at the end of the day, if you have never been in that situation, if you've never been in that locker room, if you've never been in that boardroom, and if it has never happened to you, you, you can always speculate. Yeah. But a lot of us can speak from an experience what this means and how it feels as a player and how it feels in a locker room and how it, it may catapult, catapult an organization or an organization can flounder. It, it can go either way. So, you know, everybody has their opinion. I have my own, but at the end of the day, you know, Julio Jones is gonna be fine. The Atlanta Falcons are gonna be fine because they're not listening to us anyway. <laughs> So, so based on that, you, you know, your experience in the league, you you do feel like maybe that's a lot of smoke and mirrors what Atlanta's putting out about Julio coming to them in March about seeking a trade. Well, let me tell you something. If he did, I don't blame him. Mm -hmm. Because if you're talking about, hey, if, if you're taking phone, if you, you were probably taking phone calls the first day you got hired. Mm -hmm. 
period, about Julio Jones, because people knew that, hey, you know, word is out that you're going to get rid of one of the two, and most likely it's going to be Julio, because you never really get rid of the franchise quarterback, period. So, uh, you know, he's hearing it, you know, he's hearing, well, even from, even from the coaching staff and even from the GM. Well, right now, we don't know where we're going to go with this whatsoever. You know, we just got to wait and see. If you was, if you was really sure that the both of them was going to be there, you would have said that. So he's sitting there going, wait a minute, you don't care anything about me. You're going to try to move me anyway. So let's move me, but move me to a winner. Hey, if you're going to, it probably went like this. If you're going to trade me, trade me early and trade me to a winner. It probably wasn't, I demand a trade. It was probably, hey, if you're going to do it, make sure I go someplace where I'm going to win and I'm going to be happy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm, uh, what I was going to say next is that they there's speculation he wants to go, again, speculation, reports. And, and the funny thing about you say about, about the reports is uh, where were these reports prior to – the call coming out, you know, where were the reports about yeah. Julio? They said Julio su- supposedly has been at odds with the Falcons for the past couple of years. Yeah. Yet we didn't hear that until this week. Yeah. And that's my only concern is that if, if that's the case, I get it. You keep things in house, but why are you mm-hmm. trying to save face now Falcons? Like what, what, what is this? Well, it's, this is the thing William. it's going to get worse because there's going to be a lot of finger pointing. It's going to be like he said, she said stuff. It's going to be back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Even if Julio Jones get traded, it's going to even be worse because now more things are going to come out about uh, how each other, how, you know, Falcons felt about Julio, how Julio felt about the Falcons, whatsoever. Um, So all these things are going to come out and all these things are going to be said. And all of us can speculate and all of us can say we know the T. We got the T to what's going on. Nobody knows. It, only people that know is Julio Jones and Atlanta Falcons, which is Arthur Smith and Fontenot. Though they know, and Rich McKay and Arthur Blank. Now, <laughs> let's go back words. Through all this, where's the owner? Why isn't he speaking on this? Where's the president, Rich McKay? Why is he not speaking on this? You, you just hired two guys who are a first-time head coach and a first-time first GM. And you gonna, it's, almost like, it's almost like when your son reaches 16 and he gets, or 17 and he gets his driver's license and you got this $400,000 Lamborghini sitting in the driveway and you go, hey man, take it out. I'm not giving the keys to my Lamborghini to a first-time driver. Mm-hmm. So... I'm going to assist him to make sure he's capable to drive and drive safely that we can be, so he can be productive on the road. So an owner and a president, you just gave the keys to your Lamborghini to a first time GM and a first time head coach and said, Hey, fix, fix what's been broken over the last three years. Come on, man. And I'm not knocking you, Arthur Smith, and I'm not knocking you, Font. No, I'm not doing that. I'm not saying you're not capable because it'll be the same situation if they hired me as the GM, you know, whatsoever, first time GM, blah, blah, blah. I get that. I, I'm not saying that, but I'm what I'm saying is this is that it has to be a collective effort to make sure it's a, the right thing for this organization. And I don't know, maybe Arthur Blank, maybe Rich McKay are speaking. Uh, to the two and they having meetings and conversations. I don't know that. I'm just speculating. So the thing is, we can always just give our opinions and speculate, but at the end of the day, it's going to play out the way it's supposed to, and, and everybody's going to be fine. Yeah, Arthur Blank said not too long ago that Julio would be a Falcon for life. Uh, yes. And then, yeah, we haven't heard anything since then. Yeah, see, that's the thing, and that's that's troubling to me. That's that's really that's really troubling to me, um, you know, William. It is what it is, you know. We as players, it upsets us that you 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 lose not only a teammate, 
but you you lose a family member, you you lose a good friend, um, a good football player, um, and it hurts. It hurts. Yeah, I was going to say, how do you feel? You, you're a player. You're in that locker room. You hear the phone call on Undisputed, and I mean, like, what goes through your head? Do you try to reach out to your your teammate? Do you try to you try to give them time? Well, at the end of the day, trust me, the ones that are close to him has been been speaking to him all all along. Mm -hmm. Um, And the ones that are close to him has been relaying messages back to the team, to the players. And the players know not to talk to the coaches, know not to talk to the front office, so they keep it in house. And when that came out, I I I'd be hard pressed if you can find anyone on that. In in well, you might find two or three might say I was surprised. Yeah. <laughs> that means where have you been? <laughs> you know where have you been? But others are probably going, hey, I'm not surprised. Look, you know they're gonna be shocked for a minute, but then guess what? They're professional. They got to go on. They got to move on. Yeah. So now that they, they here's here's the pressure on them as professionals. Now they got to prove that they can be productive about Julio Jones. So you know, a lot of guys got a lot of guys have to step up. Yeah, uh, Julio necessarily. Um, excuse me. What he said on the call. One of the things that we overheard is he said he wanted to be on a winner. He wanted to go to a winner, and I think that's the big thing that probably is rubbing Falcon fans wrong is how he said it i'm out of here and i want to be with a winner do you think this might add a chip to the actual falcons team that's remaining in the locker room to say you know what let's try to prove that we can actually be a winner this year mm-hmm. or are they you think they're demoralized this is what i took from the phone call listening to it a couple of times you know uh when shannon asked him hey bro you know you're gonna be a falcon and what he said no he goes i'm out of there and then the next one was like, what, you going to the Cowboys? He goes, no, I want to go to a winner. Mm-hmm. He didn't say the Falcons weren't going to be a winner. He said the Cowboys weren't going to be a winner. He didn't want to go to the Cowboys. He yeah. wanted to go to a team that he feels that's going to win the division, go to the conference championship, and on to the Super Bowl. That's what he was saying. He wasn't down. He wasn't, he wasn't kicking dirt in the Falcons' face. He wasn't doing that. He was answering a question. He wasn't saying the Falcons weren't going to be a winner. He said, if I'm not going to be a Falcon, I want to go to a winner. Yeah. And that's the way I took that phone. That's how I interpret that phone call. And, and, and I think that's how we all should interpret that phone call. Because at the end of the day, I truly believe that with Julio, they had a chance to be very special and uh, win a lot of games, and even eventually win a division. I'm not saying they can't do that. It's going to be tougher now because there's a distraction. There's a distraction. And the thing is, when there's a distraction like this, when you lose a Hall of Fame player like this, guys try to play harder and do more than they have to to yeah. prove that uh, they can win without them. And that's when mistakes happen. Just be who you are. Just be you and play the best that you can play and just let the chips fall where they may. Well, I know I'm sure fans or some of them are still crossing their fingers. Do you think there's any chance of a reconciliation that he does stay? Um, or is it over? You know what? I don't know if there's anybody. I don't know if – I guess it has to be one of those things that he and Arthur Blank are going to have to sit down and have a conversation and have dinner together, whatever it may be, and hash it out. And – he, I'm talking about Julio, have to be assured that uh, he's going to finish his career as an Atlanta Falcon. I think if, if that occurs, I think, you you know, here's someone that he can trust in the organization, and I think he, uh, we can retain him. But right now, he feels he's on an island. He feels like there's no one he can trust in the organization. That's a, that's a hard feeling. That's a bad, bad feeling. Understand that's a bad, bad feeling. And people, you know, fans, you can get upset all you want. That's just like that's just like walking to your home and, and your wife are not talking to you and the kids are not talking to you. And you're just walking around and you're speaking and you get no replies and no answers, or they get up and leave the room. That's a hard feeling. That's a gut-wrenching feeling. And that's the way he's feeling right now. Hey, I'm not being loved anymore. 
And, and I understand he's a grown man and he's professional. He should be able to get over. No, you don't. You know, you're a human being and you have feelings. And I think that's the way Julio feels right now. He's on the island. Yeah, I don't. Um, I, I personally, just from a journalistic standpoint, didn't like how uh, Shannon Sharp went about the, the whole call conversation. I get it. Uh, he actually. How you ambushed him? Yeah, and I've met him in person. He actually gets his hair cut. We get the same barber here in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. So he's the same way in person. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I, and I know that's him. That's how he is. He's mm-hmm. just probably, you know, act, reacting like that. But mm-hmm. um, just on, like I said, the journalistic side, it looks bad that, right. you know, you didn't tell the man, hey, man, this call is being recorded. Same thing if you call to pay a bill, they're going to let you know this call is being recorded you know, just to give you a heads up for anything you might say that you mm-hmm. didn't realize. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, and saying that, like you said, he feels like an island in the locker room. He may feel like he's an island in the media. So, you know, yeah. we want to extend that invitation, Julio. You're more than right. welcome to come on here and, you know, speak your mind. You have a free platform and space to say what you need to feel. Well, um, understand this, William, I, and, I, and I get what you're saying, but understand this. Mm-hmm. When Julio answered the phone and said, what's up, Unc? Mm-hmm. You don't call Shannon Unc unless you know him very, very well. Mm-hmm. He allowed you to do that. Yeah. So honestly, and I tell people this, honestly, do you do you really think that was, a, that was just a spur of the moment call? They never talked about it? You know? Me, me personally, no. Or I, just, I'm just saying people, yeah. I, I'm just saying do you think he was ambushed? Do you think that he didn't know that call? He wouldn't, uh, it wasn't being recorded or whatsoever. It wasn't being live. Do you really think he knew, did not know that he was being talked and having a discussion live on television? I, I'm hard pressed to believe that he didn't know. Yeah. Because, you know, how does, you know, Shannon ain't gonna call you out of the blue and just ask you questions, that type of question. Understand this. He picked up the phone and said, hey, bro, are you gonna be in Atlanta or what? Yeah. You don't pick up the phone if you're calling your boy. You, if if Shannon was off air, he'd say, hey, man, what you doing? You working out? What's yeah. going on? You training? How you feel? Blah, blah, blah. He didn't do that. He went straight to it. So me personally, and I may be the only one, Yeah. <laughs> I think he knew. Okay. I think he knew. And I think you see, and, and it goes back to what I said earlier. Mm-hmm. We don't know Julio. We don't know much about his personality. He, he, we don't know because we don't, we haven't seen him speak enough and be candid enough um, on television or in interviews whatsoever where we can say, we believe that he was ambushed or we don't believe he was and We don't know, but I'm just saying from my opinion, I, I think they knew. I think I think he knew that he was being recorded. I, I think say, this was his. I think this was his chance for the first time. Um, I think all this was bottled up because he's hearing from the Falcon side. He's hearing for from the the, the Falcons media mm-hmm. saying all these things about the trade and him being upset whatsoever, and he hasn't said anything. You know, and the thing is, we never heard from Julio how he felt about it. And I think he'd had enough. And I think he said, I'm going to say something finally. And he said two things. I'm out of here and I want to go to a winner. That's the only sound bites we get from Julio Jones in two years. Think about it. So at the end of the day, we can speculate and I'm speculating. But at the same time, you know, like you said, he's welcome to come on this show and talk. And I'm going to be fair with him and I'm not going to ambush him. I'm just, we're going to just talk. Hey, re- former receiver to current receiver, former Falcon to current Falcon. Hey, man to man, professional to professional, brother to brother. And we just talk, man. And, and I'm not, I'm a, I'm, look, I'm your fan, Julio. I'm a big Julio Jones fan. And um, as not only as a football player, but as a, as a human being. So come on, man. We'd love to have you on and we'll be brief. You don't have to be on for the whole 30 minutes. We're, Three and a half minutes, that's all we ask for. <laughs> yeah. Well, it won't take long. Um, and like I said, it'll give you that opportunity to get out what you what you want and be more candid. Right. Uh, there were some reports that the Patriots 
he's considering the Patriots. Again, reports considered he's, he's considering the New England Patriots. You spoke about the Patriots all for a couple months now about the Patriots yes. and the capital they had. Yes. yes. Just, you remember, remember, William, we talked about the Patriots and the Falcons with the number four pick correct. before the draft. Yes. I said, Belichick is a genius by getting all this commodity. Mm -hmm. And if you want it, and if he wants to do something, he has commodity that he can trade and give away for a guy that's going to take them to the next level. Now, understand this, why this makes a lot of sense. Not only does he have commodity, the Patriots don't care about a first round pick because they're expected to be playing late into yeah. the season and they expect to be picking, you know, somewhere from 28 to 32. So they're not, not they're not worried about it. And, and right there, they're picking need anyway. So it won't hurt them to give up a first round pick because we know it's going to be a late round pick. And he knows it's going to be a late round pick anyway. So I can see him doing that. Hey, we give up our first rounder for him and we give you a commodity. Well, who do you want? Who do you want? You can't have Cam, but who do you want? You know? Mm -hmm. So there it is. So here's another interesting point. Green Bay Packers is in the same boat. They don't care about first round picks. They don't care about that. They, they have an organization that's ready to win championships and, and they just plug people in. You get a Julio Jones, you'll stop hearing about Aaron Rodgers not wanting to be there anymore. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So now they have to give up a first round pick because I truly believe if Julio go Julio Jones goes to the Patriots or the Green Bay, he's going to redo his contract and he's going to make that team cap friendly. And, and, and. Well, well, let me ask you this from a, from a player perspective, we'll say 1999, uh, excuse me, 2000 after the Falcons went to the Super Bowl, here comes the Denver Broncos and they want to get Terrence Mathis. So are you going to go to the rival who uh, beat you in the Super Bowl? Is that something you would consider doing? <laughs> you know what? You, you, that's funny you say that because it almost happened. <laughs> <laughs> it almost happened. Gary Kubiak called me and he was, he was, uh, it was the 2000, 2001. It was 2001. He calls me and he asked my interest in the Denver Broncos. I said, I'm really interested. You know, hey, look, I, I, you know, I take a look whatsoever. Actually, it was 2002 because it was after my year with the Steelers. Yeah, I would have I went. Mm -hmm. You know, at the end of the day, you want to go somewhere where you want it, yeah. where you need it. You know, it don't matter if it's the, if it's the Patriots, the, the Green Bay Packers, if it's the Broncos, if it's That's whoever safe. it is. It's just you want to go somewhere where – you know you're going to be it, be loved, accepted, and can excel and help that team get to the Super Bowl. Yeah. Um, I, I'm thinking that the Falcons would probably rather trade him to an AFC opponent rather than an NFC, uh, especially like to a Packers at the face. Ooh, that would be bad. Um, you, don't, you don't want Julio Jones in the NFC. You don't want to see Julio Jones one time in the next two or three years. You don't want to see that. Uh, no, I personally would not <laughs> want you, to see that. <laughs> because for some reason, those guys like a Julio Jones that leave the organization come back and always do something special against the Atlanta Falcons, i.e. Deion Sanders. <laughs> yes. You know, always do something special to say, hey, you should have kept me. I belong here. This is the house I built. So uh, I don't want to see Julio. If Julio Jones leaves, please send him far away where we know that that division is not playing the NFC South for maybe a two, three years after he retired. <laughs> what, what, um, and what, what, what can the Falcons get for Julio? You know what? It, they'd be hard pressed to get a, a first round pick. Um, I think they can course. get a second round pick. I think they can get a second and a third and a, and a future, uh, third and a fourth. You Again, know? there's been reports that they were offered a first round. Why wouldn't they have taken it if that's the case? If they was offered a first round, they would have took it. Come that's on, man. Stop. <laughs> you know, that's what I'm saying. That's where, that's where I'm going with, with certain media and people saying things. Come on, man. Really? 
If they was offered a first, they would have took that. Come on. Unless it was a first from Tampa, Carolina, or New Orleans, they wouldn't take it, you know. But anywhere else, he they would have took, they would have taken that. But I think right now, as we get later and later into it, um, you only probably have uh, two or three teams that that were willing to give up a first rounder, and that's like we said, the Patriots, the Packers, and there's one other, the Cleveland Browns. Yeah. Because the Cleveland Browns have picked first round, early first round for years. And now finally, they're at the bottom of the pack when it comes to draft picks. They can afford to give one away because they're here again. Here's a team that first time in the playoffs in years, they have young talent and they had a Julio Jones. They can be very special. I've even heard of the Titans, but what baffles me about that is I'm like, well, you got the Titans OC here in Atlanta. You're going to go to Tennessee and work with a new offensive coordinator. You don't really know what you're going to get. Well, do you know what? That's a Derrick Henry thing. Yeah. Uh, whatsoever. But uh, if you are Arthur Smith, why would you want to send that, send your uh, arguably your best football player to back to where you just left? <laughs> That makes no sense. And that's the same thing with Fontenot. Why would you want to trade your best football player to now, hopefully, in your mind, is the enemy, the New Orleans Saints? You know, I hope, I hope, I hope your full heart has left New Orleans and, and is here in Atlanta. Oh, well, I'm telling you, I, I don't that would never sit well with Atlanta fans. Oh, they would burn down Mercedes Benz. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they would be calling for Arthur Smith and Fontenot's head if he went to the Saints. Yes, oh, man. my goodness. That would be detrimental to this organization. <laughs> oh, man. I don't, well, we'll leave the Julio talk alone for now. Hopefully, you know, we don't, have, unfortunately, have to discuss it next week. Hopefully, we get some good news about it here in the, in the coming weeks. And like I said, hopefully, Julio comes on the actual show and talks with well, us. Uh, I'm going to make a bold statement right here, but mm -hmm. I'm not going to talk about Julio Jones again in, unless he's traded or he's back here in Atlanta or if he's on the show. So next, okay. if you're still talking about Julio next week, you won't hear me speak anything about it unless those three things have occurred. Traded, <laughs> re or staying with the Falcons or he's on the show. On the show. Exactly. Um, I don't, I'm going to kind of get, I don't know, it's not really a throwback, but I want to ask you since our, Atlanta Hawks are one and one. They they played well against the New York Knicks. They're coming back home. Back when you were playing with the Falcons, did you ever have any camaraderie or friendship with any of the Atlanta Hawk players? Well, we we were always, you know, together someplace or at an event from Mufi to Steve Smith to Matumbo to Ty Corbin to, you know, a lot of guys. You know, we were always um you know, interacting at some point. I used to have season tickets in the Omni. Uh, okay. Yeah, so I used to be about three rows up from the court, and I was always, I was always at the games, man. And and it was, it was a, uh, it, it back then, um, Hawks basketball, man, was phenomenal. When people just, it was the place to go. It was like, it was like pre-club before the club, you know. So some of everybody. You know, from celebrities, it you know that was back when everybody you know, the Hawks were who they were, you know, and and the thing is they were always in the playoffs and tops in the division whatsoever, but they could never beat the dreaded Chicago Bulls. <laughs> yeah. yeah, those were some tough days. Yeah, so they were you know, a good team. So you know, I was always a Hawks fan. You know, from Dominique, Tree Rollins, Doc Rivers. You know. From all of them, man. So it was, um, you know, Hawks basketball, you know, hopefully uh, it's coming back. Hopefully it's coming back. And they need to win this series um, and keep going on for, for us to continue. All right, folks. Well, there you have it. Uh, another great bird talk with Terrence Mathis. Please make sure you subscribe and turn on those notifications. Anything else for him, Terrence? I have nothing else for him. I, you know, I do have one thing is this. And, it, you know, I was I was getting my cardio on this morning and something hit me. Say, and and, it, and it, it is this. Um, 
don't count other people's blessings because then you're not going to, you're going to miss out on yours. And then when someone else is, when someone gets blessed, applaud them and know that yours are coming next. And, and I said, wow. And, and, and that's, that's absolutely true. You know, we're, we're so involved with what other people are getting and, and what other people are doing. We're missing out on what God has for us. And I always say this, what God has for you, he has for you. What God has for another man is for another man and it's not yours. So we can't bash or, 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 or gloat over what somebody else is doing or not doing it's because that's I what's for them. That's there. We just the got to worry about ourselves and what God and has for us. Lays, abstract, oh. facts that we Everyone have a great day. Thank you for watching. Yes. Yes.